What's going on YouTube? Bradley here on the Kazler channel where characters come to life, bringing you a video of the top five things that you will need to bring your character animator puppet to life on Twitch. Stay tuned after the video because I'll have some personal suggestions of hardware that I use that will help bring your game to a new level. Let's get started. As always, if you find this information to be useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. We will be posting more videos in the future. But if you want to see all this stuff implemented live, we do broadcast Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Twitch, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Link in the description below. All right, so the first item on the list you're going to need is going to be a webcam. Kind of a no-brainer, but you are going to need it. Character Animator uses face tracking in order to track your performance and put it into the puppet. You don't need anything fancy here. I personally use a Logitech C250, which by today's standards is a very low-end camera. But as long as you make sure your face is lit up fine, then character has no issues with it. Item number two on the list is gonna be the microphone. I personally use the Shure SM7B, which is the microphone you see right here. You can get away with using a lower end mic, but there are a couple reasons why you wanna have your audio as clean as possible. One of the things that I noticed when I first walked into a stream, whether they're using Character Animator or not, is the audio. You wanna have it as clean as you can possibly make it in order to set yourself apart from all the others. There are a lot of people out there that just haven't figured this part out yet. Another reason is, if you can get clean audio to Character Animator, it will really help with your lip sync. If you're peaking or you're too low, Character Animator will try to compensate for that and it'll make your voice just slightly behind the mouth movements. I also suggest looking into some sort of software or hardware that has a noise gate and a compressor. If you add a noise gate to your microphone that's going in the character animator, it will really help from having those unwanted mouth movements from background noise. Next would be number three, your processor. Adobe only suggests using a multi-core Intel with 64-bit support, but that would mean all the way back to the i3. Since Character Animator and OBS are currently a little bit of CPU hogs, I would suggest nothing less than the i7. When I first started streaming with Kazler, I was on the i5 and it made everything really laggy. Every time I'd get a notification from like a follower or donation, it would basically put the puppet at a standstill. Now, if you're successfully using a different processor, put in the comments below and let me know. I hear AMD actually works really well with Character Animator. And number four is OBS and kind of a given. We won't talk much about this one until we get into step number five, but you're gonna need OBS or XSplit to broadcast out to Twitch. Since I know nothing about XSplit, I'm just gonna keep this strictly to OBS. OBS, as most of you guys know, is a free program and you can download it at obsproject.com. And for the last one, my friends, number five is NDI. NDI is how you're gonna be able to get your signal from Character Animator to OBS. Now, you could make a green screen layer in the puppet and just capture the window and then chroma it out, but it's a lot of steps in NDI, trust me, is the easiest and the cleanest way to do it. First, you're gonna to need to download two things. The first one is gonna be a new text NDI for Adobe Creative Cloud, and the second one is gonna be your OBS plugin for NDI. I have links in the description for both these plugins, but once you're able to download and install the NDI for Adobe Creative Cloud, you're gonna to have to make sure it's enabled inside Character Animator before it will talk to OBS. You can go to edit, preferences, then go to your live output and make sure the NDI output is selected. Push okay after you're done. Now that you have Character Animator pushing an NDI signal, it's time to go grab the plugin from the OBS website. Download and install that, and once that's done, you're gonna be able to go into your sources tab, add a source, and NDI source will show up. All right guys, that is the five things that you're gonna need in order to bring your Character Animator puppet to life on Twitch but I do have a couple other suggestions. Bonus item number one is gonna be the Elgato Stream Deck. This thing is amazing. Not only can you control the transitions and scenes in OBS, but you can also program some of the buttons to use some of the triggers on the puppet. An example of this on my channel is I have a water bottle that I use on the Stream Deck that when chat gets out of hand, we make sure that they're trained right. The last bonus item and my favorite, by far the best piece of hardware that I ever invested in is a foot pedal. I use the pedal for things that need to be reacted to quickly. While you're playing a game, it's hard to take your hand from the keyboard to the stream deck in order to trigger a surprise emotion, that you're bored, that you're mad, or show some love for the newest notification that came through. So the pedal has really helped me with those reactions and not taking my hand off the keyboard. 
All right, guys, that is it on this video of how to bring your character animator puppet to live on Twitch. If there's anything that I talked about today that you want me to expand on, please let me know in the comments so I can make future videos for you guys. Until then, thank you guys so much and happy streaming.